If you like what you see today, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot to me when you do that. And um, who knows, I might hit 500 viewers before long. So anyway, what we're going to look at today is we are going to look at making the perfect seam allowance. There's a whole lot of controversy out there over exact quarter inch or a scant quarter inch. And then among that, there's a question, well, what is a scant quarter inch? What I like to prescribe to is checking my seam allowance on the machine I'm working on. Not every machine is going to be exactly the same. Now, if you look at this machine, what you're going to see is I do have a mark in here for my quarter inch. I'm not going to be concerned with that at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay a charger in here. A charger is simply a piece of fabric and as you can see I've sewn over it many, many times. What it does is it keeps the foot from rocking when you go from one piece of fabric to the other. What I have done here is I have three strips of fabric. These strips are four inches long and they are exactly one and a half inches wide. The width is very important because this is how we're going to set up our seam allowance by ensuring that those measurements are accurate. One other thing that I've also um, kind of just covered with some of the girls in my classes is called glue basting. And if I could get my glue to come down the needle there, <laughs> sometimes it takes a little bit of, um, I don't want to say coercion, it just takes a little bit of um, encouragement. And what I'm using here is I'm using Roxanne's glue base. It's a temporary basting glue. It does wash out when you're done. You'll see I just put a small dab right across where I'm going to have my seam allowance. And you definitely want to keep it within that seam allowance. You don't want it to go to the outside of it because it will it will stick. <laughs> and then once we have our seams, our fabrics, I'm sorry, lined up, we want to make sure that when you look at this side, you cannot see the white. When you look at this side, you cannot see the orange. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it over to my iron and I'm just going to hit it with a dry iron for a few seconds. And what that's going to do is that's going to ensure as I'm stitching, these two fabrics will not be shifted in any way, shape, or form. So a scan quarter inch. Normally what I do with this machine is I will try to sew maybe two thread widths to the left of this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my fabric in here. We're going to go ahead and start. I do like to piece with a 50 weight thread because it is more accurate. The smaller the thread, the more accurate your seam will be. Because when you turn your two pieces of fabric over, which I'm going to show you in just a minute here, it does have some dimension. So if you have just a small thread in there, it's going to have less dimension than if you have a large thread in there. I'm going to put my ending charger on and we're just going to stop it there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to remove it from the chargers. Now, I don't want to accidentally sew this seam into this side, so I'm just going to take it and I'm going to just, with my fingers, push it back a little bit here and just go over it so that it just stays out of my way. And then I'm going to go ahead, where did my glue go? There it is. See if I can 
coax a little more out and I'm going to go ahead and glue this side of the seam. It's not a lot. You don't need a lot. I'm going to go ahead and lay this strip. Remember these strips are one and a half inches each and the reason being is if we do a perfect quarter inch seam allowance we're going to have exactly the right size orange piece that we need in the middle and that will be one inch wide. Just going to hit it with the iron here and again I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to insert that piece of fabric in keeping everything nice and steady. Now I'm not a fast stitcher. Some people do like to go rather quickly. I personally, and it is a personal preference, I'm not saying you should do things one way or another, but I personally do like to go just a little bit slower, you know, uh, but staying steady, whether you're going fast or whether you're going slow, is always a good idea. When we stop and start, we can easily kind of jerk our fabric over a little. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see this stitching, but it sure looks beautiful, nice and straight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these up. I'm going to move you just a little bit here. I'm going to open these seams up. And I like to do what's called finger pressing. And when I do finger pressing, the purpose behind it is to ensure that that seam opens up all the way. You don't want to have a big old pleat there over your seam. You want that seam to be nice and open and straight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay my iron on that piece of fabric that I just made and we're going to see if in fact we did a correct seam allowance. This is one I did earlier. I lucked out. That one came out just right the first time. This ruler is not one inch wide. If you have a one inch wide ruler that that's awesome because you could just lay it down like this. If you don't have a one inch ruler, I'm going to suggest not coming from the edge of the ruler, but finding the one inch seam allow, one inch uh, measurement, excuse me, within the ruler. And then I'm going to lay one on one side, which is my two inch measurement and my three inch measurement. And what you're going to see is this is exactly an inch between it. Now, if this were less than an inch, what that means is that seam allowance would be too big. If it's more than an inch, your seam allowance would be too small. So if you think about it like Goldilocks and the three bears, you don't want it too big like Papa Bear and you don't want it too small like Mama Bear. You want it just right like Goldilocks likes it. So there we go. That is how we're going to set up and make a beautiful, beautiful seam allowance. Remember, the key to making a good block is threefold. One is your cutting. You want to be sure that your cutting is absolutely accurate. If these pieces were not accurate, I would not be able to determine if my seam allowance was accurate. So cutting is the first point of perfection. Next is going to be the sewing. You want to make sure that it's sewn correctly and that your seam allowance is done nicely. And the third is pressing. Remember when we're putting blocks together, 
we're not ironing them, we're pressing them. So I hope this little tutorial is helpful. I hope you'll try this. As I said, I like to do it on each machine before I get started because every machine is just a little bit different. And I hope you have fun making perfectly beautiful blocks. Until we meet again, let's quilt.